Okay, haves and have not fans, we're talking the top five saddest moments in the series. And as always, with lists like these, it's my opinion. You can let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section below as to what were the saddest moments for you. But here we go. Number five. Early in season one, this was after Benny got railroaded and got arrested. He was in jail because David had somebody plant drugs in the car that Candace blackmailed Jim for. And while it was Candace who was supposed to be arrested, it was actually Benny Benny who was borrowing the car for his date and he got arrested instead. Instead, Hannah was pleading, trying to get help from anybody to, you know, get her son out of jail. And, you know, he she was able to meet with David while he was at work and they went into his office to, you know, discuss the situation. And, you know, she was like, could you at least get him some blankets or something because it's cold in jail? And um, he actually, you know, said, I'll, I'll do what I can. Because remember, he was, you know, responsible for this. This was something Jim didn't even do. But when she asked to pray with him, it's like, would you please pray with me? And then she began praying. And this man was in tears because he was feeling conviction. One of the most beautiful but saddest moments of the series number four even though this was something she deserved i do feel a bit bad for candace when charles turned his back on her after you know finding out about her past i think this was after they had went to the white house and um after she was seen on television it's kind of crazy when you think about it, especially the day and age we live in, where you can get canceled out of the blue. Now, remember, Candace was seen on camera leaving the White House with Charles. That's it. They were just seen leaving the White House. And a bunch of people came forward about, that's a whore. You know what? She messed around with my husband. She messed around with this CEO. She's a con artist. She's this. She's that trending a press nightmare and because of that for the sake of his career his reputation charles kicked her to the curb didn't even give a final word basically turned his back on her and let you know the security force her even though it wasn't shown on screen because the press and all were outside of Charles's house. Like what? She was snuck into like the trunk of a car and driven to the airport and forced home. That was wild. I did feel some kind of way. It felt bad, but it's like, this is what happens. And like I said, when you look at, for example, the Jonathan Major situation, you have that ex-girlfriend who, I, look, I don't know what's true and what's false, but regardless because of her allegations towards him you have all these other people from the past coming forward talking about how he did this he did that even though it's like where were you all before this i don't know but it's just crazy how once the ball starts rolling with allegations there's no stopping it and yeah it sucked because candace was happy i mean personally i was on you know i was never like pro candace i'm like she has done far too much to have a happy ending, but in terms of her demeanor, she was actually in love and happy for a change. But regardless, that didn't matter. Her past caught up to her. And it's just like I said with Zach on Sisters and Zatima. Just because Zach is changing for the better doesn't mean everything he's done in the past just goes away. There you go. Number three, Amanda getting sexually assaulted by Professor Cannon. I felt so bad for Amanda. It wasn't Candace's fault. Candace was the one that told her to dress up, you know, seduce him in a way to get a recess. But that was not her fault when it came to Cannon coming over there to assault her. And that was when her character broke. And she became the psychotic Amanda who we saw from that point forward. It truly was a sad, a sad thing to see, you know, this innocent character going through what she went through and we saw how it made her want to take her own life allegedly she was pregnant you know and then she just stopped taking her meds and then she you know she got her re revenge but it was just wild to see her go through that 
Number two, Quincy Jr. being killed. You know, I think the saddest part about it wasn't just the fact that this was an innocent kid, but the fact that Hannah was holding his dead body as she came out of the bathroom after Warlock, you know, shot up the place of his crew. That was just tragic. And then, oh man, the moment at the funeral home when Candace opens up the coffin and sees her son there. That was crazy. It was so intense. So... Quincy Jr.'s death definitely makes my list as one of the saddest moments in the series. And, um, man, number one, number one here. Now, originally, this was number two and Quincy Jr. was number one, but I really sat on it to think some more. But I think Catherine's entire journey with her breast cancer it truly felt sad because you know number one it's relatable you know a lot of uh viewers either have dealt with this directly or indirectly you know through a friend or family member but i think it got bumped up for me because it was revealed in real life that Catherine crier aka renee lawless had breast cancer as well and i think this was revealed not long after the series ended and after um you know the final cast reunion aired and it's like holy crap but praise god you know renee was able to beat it so that was really a joyful moment from you know the whole thing about what's that saying art is an imitation of life but seeing that just like Catherine crier renee was able to beat it was actually very very inspiring but going to the show itself it's the fact that we saw this play out throughout what season one you know from Catherine crying alone in her room and you know trying to wash the blood out of her sheets and whatnot and then sad but you know on a happier note her cancer was really the thing that was the um, beginning of her beautiful friendship with Hannah and I think one of the most profound yet depressing things that came out from the cancer was when Catherine told Hannah look I was literally dying in front of my family and nobody noticed because she hadn't told anybody about her cancer. Remember, Wyatt was in rehab. Amanda was in law school. Her husband, well, when he wasn't at work, he was with a whore. And when he wasn't with a whore, he would stop in at home to get something to eat and sleep and be about his business. And it's the fact that after her surgery and whatnot, she told Hannah, I was like, look, I'm just going to live life to live life because... I was literally dying and I almost ended up in my grave trying to keep this family from crumbling apart. But now I'm just going to sit back, YOLO, <laughs> let the chips fall where they may. But yeah, I think for me, you know, Catherine going through all that and feeling so alone is what truly put it at the top of my list, as well as the real life situation with Miss Lawless. So those are my top five saddest moments in the series. I think you could argue another uh, moment that make that should have made the list was when Veronica disowned her own son because he's gay. I think that was sad too. Like, you know, at the ending of uh, season one, when he came out to his parents and she literally disowned him leading into the next season where, you know, she had kicked him out of his apartment, cut off his credit cards, and he had nothing. So that was pretty sad too. All right, well, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below, and I will catch you in the next one.